Of the starkest warnings yet from a member of the Trump administration, the head of the CIA has admitted North Korea is only a matter of months away from perfecting its nuclear weapons capabilities. Speaking at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies in Washington on Thursday, CIA Director Mike Pompeo warned that North Korea could be only months away from perfecting its nuclear weapons capabilities. He emphasized the need for a concerted global effort to pressure the regime. They are closer now than they were five years ago, and I expect they will be closer in five months than they are today, absent uh, a global effort to push back against them. And it is the case that they are close enough now in their capabilities that from a U.S. policy perspective, uh, uh, we ought to behave as if we are on the cusp of them achieving that objective. The threat posed by North Korea has grown to the unprecedented, critical and imminent level. Therefore, we have to take calibrated and different responses to meet with that level of threat. China has held a drill near its border with North Korea on how to prepare against radiation exposure following a nuclear bomb test. The Immigration and Inspection Office in Tandung says around 50 people, mainly state officials, took part in the exercise. It included a scenario of inspectors discovering a vehicle loaded with illegal radioactive material trying to cross the border from North Korea. The drill is seen as a real-life simulation as there is suspicion that a number of vehicles carrying radioactive material came through Tandung when North Korea conducted its sixth nuclear test last month. Jose, good evening. Tonight, what amounts to a tense standoff between North Korea, where I am now, and Washington. The North Korean foreign minister vowing that this country will continue its nuclear program, while joint exercises between the US and South Korea off the coast here just wrapped up. Exercises that the North Koreans consider an extreme provocation. We came here to try to assess the views of ordinary North Koreans. And while dissent is frowned upon here, what we found are many people who say they want peace but are ready for war even a nuclear war with America. Our starting point to this morning, the defense chiefs of South Korea, the United States and Japan have agreed to coordinate their efforts to resolve tensions with North Korea through pressure and diplomacy. They also vowed to maintain a high state of readiness against any further provocations from Pyongyang by holding joint military drills. Our Yu Junhee starts us off. Seoul's defense minister Song Young moo met his U.S. and Japanese counterparts, James Mattis, in Itsunori Onodera on the sidelines of the ASEAN Security Forum in the Philippines on Monday. There, the three defense chiefs agreed to support trilateral efforts to address the North Korean nuclear issue through maximum pressure. They also recognized the need to heighten their military posture by continuing to hold trilateral, ballistic missile warning, and anti-submarine warfare drills in light of the regime's growing threat. Seoul's defense chief stressed, however, that South Korea does not want to engage in conflict with the North and that it was prioritizing a peaceful solution to the crisis. But he warned that if Pyongyang were to use military force on its country, South Korea would be forced to take strong action. We understand the weight of engaging in a war as such. We would make all efforts necessary to resolve the issue in a diplomatic and economic way. Tokyo's defense minister, in comparison, adopted a much tougher tone on Pyongyang for its recent provocations, including a pair of missile launches that flew over Japanese territory. Onodera sounded the alarm on North Korea's growing nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities and endorsed Washington's view to consider all options on the table. The threat posed by North Korea has grown to the unprecedented, critical and imminent level. Therefore, we have to take calibrated and different responses to meet with that level of threat. Other ASEAN ministers at the meeting also expressed concerns about escalating tensions on the Korean Peninsula. They called on all parties to exercise restraint and work towards resuming dialogue for the peaceful denuclearization of North Korea. Fox News alert now. North Korea reportedly is going after President Trump as a, quote, hooligan and lunatic and warning the United States is running headlong into ruin. 
Let's go outnumbered overtime now. I'm Harris Faulkner. This follows a report that the U.S. is ready to put its nuclear bombers back on 24-hour alert for the first time since the Cold War. But an Air Force spokesperson is pushing back on that, saying the current plan does not have any such movement in it, but they must be ready if directed. And President Trump is echoing that. He told Fox News yesterday that the U.S. is ready to respond to North Korea if needed. Watch. We're prepared for anything. We are so prepared like you wouldn't believe. You would be shocked to see how totally prepared we are if we need to be. Uh, would it be nice not to do that? The answer is yes. Will that happen? Who knows? Let's bring in Ambassador John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and a Fox News contributor and senior fellow for the American Enterprise Institute. Ambassador, always good to see you. So important to get your points of view now on this Monday. I have read an editorial that you have written and something stood out. You said we can't let Kim Jong-un and his bizarre regime have America by the throat. Why would you put it that way? Well, I think that's the position we would be in if we allowed North Korea to acquire and retain uh, the capability to hit any target in the United States with thermonuclear weapons, which they are very close to doing, as uh, CIA Director Mike Pompeo said just a few days ago. Uh, and that's why I think uh, the president's upcoming trip to Asia is going to be important. This meeting today, the prime minister of Singapore, uh, important in its own right to be sure, but also helping to set the stage for that. Uh, I think North Korea Korea will be probably the single most important issue for the president, certainly in his meetings in Japan, South Korea, and China, but also with the countries of Southeast Asia as well. You know, Ambassador, you and I often talk about points of history being so important to go back to. And in your article, and today, I would love for you to tell our viewers about something that happened. Franklin Roosevelt, September 11th, 1941. Well, you know, this was a period just obviously less than two months before the attack on Pearl Harbor, and uh, President Roosevelt uh, faced some very difficult decisions, and one of the decisions that he announced on that uh, fireside chat on September the 11th was giving the U.S. Navy authorization to fire first uh, at German submarines and warships, uh, saying you don't uh, wait uh, when you see a rattlesnake uh, poised to bite before you kill it, basically. Uh, and I think uh, this is a lesson in preemption. It's a hard lesson. It's not one we want to face. But I think it's one the president needs to make clear to North Korea and to China uh, that he's prepared to undertake, like Roosevelt did, to protect the interest of the United States. Hopefully there's still a peaceful way to get these nuclear weapons away from North Korea. But time is running out. That's the hard reality. And staying with that story of President Trump's Asia trip, his five-country visit could mark the peak of tensions that have been building up for months between the uh, United States and North Korea. Experts also say this is an opportunity for Trump to lay a firm groundwork of his foreign policy following mixed messages sent out by members of his cabinet. Yu jun -hee reports. After weeks of harsh rhetoric aimed at the regime, President Trump will bring his threats to North Korea's front door when he embarks on the first Asia tour of his young presidency. More importantly, observers are hoping his trip will clear up some of the uncertainties surrounding his administration's approach to Pyongyang's nuclear and missile programs. Confusion has reigned in recent weeks after President Trump and members of his cabinet delivered conflicting messages on how they plan on tackling those issues. In addition to Washington's East Asian allies, Trump is hoping to strike a deal with Beijing for its cooperation in denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula when he meets with Chinese President Xi Jinping as part of his Asia tour. A close eye is being maintained on President Xi for any changes in his stance on North Korea, with China's Communist Party Congress set to renew his five-year term as General Secretary later this week. Economic agendas will also be on the table, with President Trump likely to seek concessions over the South Korea-U.S. free trade deal, as well as his trade with China. He could also face challenging questions on why he pulled the U.S. out of the 12-nation Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement and how he plans on creating an alternative trade framework. These issues will likely come to the forefront when President Trump attends a pair of regional forums, namely the APEC Summit in Vietnam and the ASEAN Plus 3 meeting in the Philippines to wrap up his week-long visit to Asia.